Enjoy Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people from the Android community. I'm Chuki Chen, and today we are chatting with Hugo Fisher, or as the Dutch call it, Hugo Fisher. But Hello, that's like the... Hugo. Yeah. Actually... <laughs> uh, where are you based, and what do you do? So I'm from Netherlands. I'm uh, obviously an Android developer mm -hmm. for uh, many years. I think five or six years already. Okay. And uh, I'm now running my own. A small company doing projects, Android projects for various customers. Great. And how did you get started on Android? Um, I was started with my uh, with a weather app that I built called Rainy Days. What, what app? A, a weather app. Writer app. Weather. 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 App. Sorry, no speak Dutch. Weather. <laughs> Sorry, no speak English. Uh, so yeah, it's called Rainy Days. Okay. And I started because it rains a lot yeah. in the Netherlands. Yeah. <laughs> and that sort of spiraled out of control. I added more countries and more uh, uh, features to that app. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing I built in 2009. That's yeah. like like Eclair days. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, no, it was on my ACC Hero. So that's 1.5. Whoa, cupcake! Yeah, cupcake. Wow, okay. Good evening, yeah. Wow, a long time ago. Yeah. Great. Do you still maintain that app? Yeah, I do. I Supporting actually, all the way back to Cupcake? No, no, I, re I rewrote it. <laughs> you I, don't hate yourself. No, I basically rewrote it like um, mm -hmm. a year ago, I think. Oh, so it's all material design then? No, Ish. not really. But the, the main problem was the Google Maps API that got renewed. Mm. So I needed to move over to the new maps. Ah, so that was a force factor for you to yeah, actually... Yeah, Because I have some apps I wrote back in the day as well and I think last time I compiled it was against uh, ice cream sandwich, maybe, and <laughs> I did not even bother to recompile it just because I have so many new projects to take care of. Yeah. So speaking of new projects, I have actually two of them that I want to talk about today. Uh, one is Cupboard, which is the way I would put it, a SQLite wrapper. I don't know, maybe you have a more official, grand way of putting it. Um, the other one is it's the APT plugin. Yeah, Android APT. Which I don't even know how to describe it. All I know is that I. I need it if I'm using Dagger. So we will let Hugo explain to you. Um, so let's talk about Cupboard first. Um, so let's try this. In your words, how will you describe Cupboard? Um, I usually have this punchline saying simple persistence for Android. Okay. But what, it, what I feel like uh, what it is is more like syntactic sugar, make it easier to work with, mm. uh, with databases. So it's not so much a, a big library or framework okay. or anything, but just yeah. Uh, so when you say syntactic sugar, the way I think of it, at least the way I use it, um, the way I use Cupboard is I define some Pojo, like plain old Java objects, which I want to store inside a SQLite database. Right. But I don't want to write the SQLite, uh, all, the, all, the, all the query statements and all those things. Um, so I, I think we still have to define the uh, database helper. That right, doesn't do. Right, right. So I will define the database helper and then send, like, hand that over to Cupboard and then once I did that part and I register, then Cupboard would be like, okay, great, what do you do what now? And then you can create your POJO and you say dot create with, uh, I forgot the syntax. Put, put okay, put. put. Yeah. Um, and then we'll do all the magic to put it in. Right. And, and also handles all the database creation and upgrade. Yeah, so that's sort of what I mean with, with syntactic sugar that mm -hmm. uh, usually you would write all kinds of SQL statements and yeah. all nasty stuff. Right. And now it's just, it's still using the same concepts. It's still using the database helper and the cursors right. and content providers if you're using that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it adds a little bit um, yeah, boilerplate reduction maybe. Okay. Yeah, so um, let's go through maybe one example, right? So like maybe I created an object. Say I use a database to manage Android Dialogs episode right, for right, some right. reason, right? So I have an, an, an object that is maybe the guest name mm -hmm. and the title and the uh, air date. Right. Right. So how, how would I use the database to store this so that later I can query about um, you know, all these people that uh, appear on my show? Right. Okay. So first, uh, important thing about Cupboard is it's not really relational. So when people think databases, it's oh. things will manage the relationships for it. So I cannot have like a tag that is multiple, like one to many. Uh, well, you can, database. but you can, uh, Cupboard is not really doing anything there okay. in that sense. Okay. What what um, and that also makes it it's very easy to use. Mm. So it's sort of a deliberate choice not to 
try to be the same. So you went for the simple, which A, right. it's simple you use, but B means that it doesn't handle complex situations. No, if you want to store like relationships, you now right. have the option to sort of uh, embed that. So you store the object with this relationship as a whole. But that means that you don't get uh, you don't get the query on the relationship. Ah, so it's just a blob. So, so just a blob, and it, okay. But you can also like if you know if you want a relationship, you can just first store the, the first object and then store the second one. So if you would would have like um, guests and episodes, that could be mm -hmm. two objects, obviously. Mm, I see. So two tables. Two tables. Okay. So two every object will would map to a table. Uh -huh. So if you have two objects, you have two tables. But then if I have a guest table and an episode table, right. um, how do I put in the episode table that this is the guest is Hugo? Mm -hmm. how, how do I link them? Uh, That's again, it's getting into relational, right? Right, right. So there's, there's a little bit of a relational aspect to it. Um, because what you can do with Kerbert is mm -hmm. just have um, an episode object with a guest a, a, a object embedded in that. Oh, okay. And it will store the ID of the guest so that's, in that sense. So that's how relational database work. Right, but it won't store the actual, it won't do like uh, fetching of relational Ah, I see. Sense. Okay, so if I understand this correctly, I could say that, you know, get me the episode that has the name Kerbert. Right. If we're calling this cupboard, yeah. um, and then it will return to me and say, "Hey, this is the object, and it has the title cupboard, and it says guest colon one." And yeah. that's just the idea of the guest. And yeah. I don't know what one means <laughs> unless I, I, me, can turn around and, and then ask cupboard again. Here, fetch me the guest with the ID one. Yeah, actually, it will will give you the episode with an object called guest. Mm -hmm. If you have like a field named guest. Oh. And that will only have its ID set. Ah, so, so the, so the next step would be then call covered if you're only using a database, uh -huh. you call covered with database get and you pass in the guest object and it will then fill, fetch, it, in. fill it in. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's actually one less step than I'm imagining right. because I'm imagining they will return me an integer or long. I think long are the yeah, ID yeah, type. Yeah. Um, and then oh, the, I don't know. I don't even know what type this is. So at least like I have the type as specified by the uh, object. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like a shell object, right? right. It's just this type of object with this ID. Okay, so that's actually, it, like, it's kind of halfway there. Um, and, and SQLite, the reason why it has the word light in it is because it don't do all those stuff. Yeah, it's very tempting so, to say, oh, I know database, let's do the same on the mobile, right. or on the mobile and side. Right. Yeah, there, there are performance issues that you will want to consider. Right. Um, but well, even with that, I mean, even with SQLite, you could do um, some filtering, right? It's not, not necessarily that, oh, you know, you can just fetch the whole object or by its ID, right? So for example, if I have the episodes and I have a field that is the date, right. I could do, like, I want to get all the episodes that is uh, aired from July 1st to August the 31st, right? right? That, that I can use cover for. Yeah, it will still work. You can basically query on any field mm -hmm. using a SQL query and right. Cupboard then provides extra, um, a nicer syntax to query on that compared to uh, Android uh, core framework, I think. The way I use it, uh, maybe that that's another way, is I put in a string <laughs> that is, so for example, uh, air date uh, greater than or equal to question mark mm -hmm. and air date smaller than or equal to question mark, comma, and then I put in the two values that uh, I will probably be storing air date at timestamps, actually. So it's not actually a date, it also will be just some, some number <laughs> that yeah. got translated from uh, July 1st into the, the Unix timestamp. Right. Um, for some reason, I was under the impression that that's how you do that in SQLite as well. Yeah, but if you look at uh, the Android call, then you have to pass in, like, for example, the arguments. Uh -huh. It's a string array, so you have to right. make... Oh. Every, every time you have to create a string array, and yeah. it takes, like, uh, four, I think it takes additional methods, uh, additional parameters mm. for the query, which you have to repeat Like the, the select time. arcs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really make sense. So right. it's just a little bit nicer to work right. with. Now I can see why you're saying syntactic sugar, because before you point it out in my mind, I forgot how I forgot because I've been using Cover so much that I have forgot how the underlying implementation was. Right. But that's just the same, but it is not the same because kind of like conceptually it's the same, but syntactically it's much cleaner yeah. to, for, to be able to just give a variable length uh, number of arguments rather than I have to make an array and I put it here and then. Yeah, and yeah, like you that. don't, for example, in the normal way, you always have to. Put in a projection, projection which corresponds. Uh, yes. 
and there's this standard group and the by, sort order yeah group by having yeah. uh, most of the times you don't need that so right. you and, yeah now get just this query build when you can pass them in if you need them and otherwise you just i really like that. that i mean i i've really taken to this fluent api way of doing things which i think most of us have used that if you have done a dialogue in android before android dialogues <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you do a dialogue builder, you do a new Android, uh, not Android dialogue, new alert dialogue dot builder. So that's your builder object, and then you can do dot set title, set um, message, and then um, dot create. Right. And I think Cobalt uses the same syntax to make queries. Yes. Um, so you can also after, for example, you did the filtering, you can do the limits uh, after right. that, which I feel is much better than having a six argument function that every time you use, you forget what is the third argument again. Yeah. Um, um, so that's yeah. That was the reason for writing it. There are well, I've I've used it kind of two ways. One is just I just want to grab one object out. I kind of knew there's only one, so I would do mm -hmm. the dot get. Yeah. Um. So how about if I want to get a list of them, right? If I want to, like like my previous sample, if I want all the episodes that's in July and August. Yeah. Do I have to use a cursor or can I get a list back? You can use get a list. Okay. Uh, it's, it depends on how large your data set is. Right. If it's a smart idea, but if uh -huh. you have like. Yeah, I think up to a thousand or something. That shouldn't be that bad. A list okay. of thousand objects. Uh, you can also get an iterator, so you can oh. just iterate over the results, and that will be backed by the cursor. So we will be pretty efficient to do that. Oh, and if you have an iterator, you can write a for loop. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all about just making it look nice. I mean, you can write a for loop for the cursor as well, but it's a weird for loop. You have yeah. to like move like to the first more position of the cursor, and then you have to do the next, and then you have to check whether the has next or something like that. Yeah, I just never next. remember yeah. the, the syntax, whereas a follow-up I've been using that since I started programming. <laughs> like right. That I remember. Yeah. So that's nice that um, you also did that wrapping. Right. So yeah, you can either pick or choose how you want to do it. If you use the iterator though, you still have to close it because mm -hmm. you have to close the cursor. Right. If you do the list, it will automatically close the cursor for you. Nice. So yeah. Try finally. So ugly. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I don't uh, like that syntax. I'm not sure if you yeah. already have this out of the, the resource management thing from Java 7, but I don't think oh. we have that on Android. Oh, that would be nice. Um, I, I just really hate it though. <laughs> Every time you have to do a try finally, yeah. it's like, oh, when, why? <laughs> it's so tedious. I mean, kind of in general, there's a lot of boilerplate of that kind. Yeah. So like, Kamba is kind of one attempt to, you know what, if everybody is doing the same annoying thing, why don't we shove it in the cupboard and not <laughs> you yeah, don't have to deal idea. with it? And actually, I was doing the same thing every, every time. So right. that's why just I, copy and paste. That's why I'm writing this. Great. Um, so before I move on to the next topic, I want to ask you if you have like one pro tip for people who are using cupboard or in general um, storing data. Like one, one thing oh, that you would a one, share. one pro tip yeah. that I really like mm -hmm. is that you can use cupboard not only for storing your own data, but also, uh, for example, uh, working with existing APIs. Hmm. So if you're working with the context API, for example, that also okay. gives you a cursor. Uh -huh. And Kerberit will happily map that cursor to an object that you pass to it. I love it. So yeah. if you have like your own POJO and you uh -huh. you map these fields, and there are some annotations as well to make the field names uh, right. nicer. If 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 the data, I think the context API has something like data one. As so I could imagine something. For example, if I want to query the pictures in the gallery, right. which come back as a cursor, <laughs> man, I'm like, uh, yeah. I don't like working with cursors because I have to define all the column names and and whatnot. So Kav, can you walk me through how do I map it into a POJO okay. uh, with Cupboard? Yeah, it's very easy actually. You just mm -hmm. have to, I think it's the Media Store API. Okay. It has, the, it has a, a, an interface called Media Columns, if I'm correct. Something of that kind. Something we'll of we'll that look kind. it up and then you know. Yeah. The... So then you make your POJO. Mm -hmm. And what what's typically convenient is to enable annotation uh, support on Cupboard so that you can use the Add column and Ooh. pass in that media media columns dot column that you want to query for right and then you just define the fields for each of those columns uh -huh. and um, the next thing would be to fire off the query to the media store uh -huh. and then you just tell cover it with cursor and then um, iterate or query. So basically, it's like with class. Like you also have the cover with class, right? Like what what pojo? Yeah. And then you can then give it or map it to the cursor. Yeah. So what it what it will do is uh, curve it with and then uh -huh. the context that you are, right. want to use. So if yeah. you're using from from a database, it will uh -huh. be the database. Right. In this case, you would uh, pass in the cursor. So it's called with cursor, oh, and then you pass in the cursor. Oh, gotcha. And then, and then you still have the same things like get and list and etc. 
Wow, no, that is a really good pro tip. And also, again, you still have the iterator there. Guys, if you have not noticed that yet, I don't like working with cursors. No. <laughs> it's just so clumsy. <laughs> it's just so clumsy. But I didn't realize that I can also take other people's cursor, not the, yeah. the my database, but some other thing, and just wrap it in, and then put a bow tie on it. And I'm then... actually building a photo app uh, currently, so I'm using it all the time. Now. Uh, so the other thing I want to talk about is your uh, APT uh, plugin, which, like I said, I don't even know how to describe that. So I will hand that to you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so APT is um, it's annotation processing. Okay. And uh, the reason why this plugin exists is because by default, if you are having a project which uses Dagger, for example, right, um, the the processor will just work and it will compile. But if you're using Android Studio, mm -hmm. it will not show the generated sources in Android Studio. So you okay. have this this red code snippets ah. which won't for Android Studio will think it won't compile. I see. So. What uh, so what uh, uh, the plugin does is, is actually two things. It makes it possible to specify uh, annotation processors and not have them in your APK because by default, if you put anything yeah. on, on the compile class, but it will be in your package in your APK. But we don't, we don't want to ship that. We don't want to ship that <laughs> right. because that's 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 not even a, an Android API. It's a Java API. Right. So that's that's one. So if you define the APT scope in your Gradle file, it won't. End up in your uh, in your APK, mm -hmm. and secondly, it will tell Android Studio, "Hey, here's the place where the generated sources living right. are living." So once the processor runs and generates the sources, uh, Android Studio will know about those sources. So now your code will just work because Android Studio can now find the code that it ah. has generated through the annotation processor. Very nice. So that's why I need it for Dagger because. Yes. Uh, when I am using the component, which is generated, if I don't have APT, then I cannot do you code complete. You can't import it. I can't. Well, I could use Android Studio like a dumb editor yes. and just type everything in, and it will still compile. I think right, right. it will still compile and push it out. But then, what's the point of using an IDE if yeah. it cannot help me? It's very cumbersome if you don't have right. something like that. And how did that project come along? Well, I actually wrote um, my own annotation processor for something else. Mm -hmm. And back then, it was working in Eclipse. And when I moved over to Android Studio, it wasn't working anymore because of, ah. because of the same problems. Right. So then I started hunting on Stack Overflow, of course. Of course. Found something, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, adjusted, adjusted the solution that I found, and uh, I made a script of it. And that started to pop up everywhere on the internet at some point. And then I thought, well, maybe Maybe it's much easier if I make this a plugin because then I don't have to copy paste the so script. So the all. script is like a shell script, a Python script? No, then? just a Gradle snippet. Oh, okay. Which I would include in my Gradle build file. Oh, okay. But yeah, that got. So, so there's some extra Gradle functions that you yeah. call and things yeah. like that. And yeah. then you wrap it into a. Uh, so I eventually, plugin. I wrapped it in a plugin, and then. Uh, oh, the thank you for doing that. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll be the one popping and pasting that like a snippet. Uh, people are already doing that, and I was yeah. oh, oh, but I already fixed it. And, and, right. Well, yeah. you know, you cannot fix a snippet, no. and people don't know that there's a new version out. Right. Great. So yeah, and uh, also the Android Tools team added some APIs to make it a little bit nicer to tell Android Studio where the sources are. So they ah. they helped also a little bit with that. Great. Well, I think I can like just sit here and ask all kinds of questions all day long. But let's just you know keep it short, short and sweet. Yeah. But if people want to follow up and see what else you do, where can they find you on the internet? Ooh, the best thing would probably be to go to my Google Plus. Okay. So which is this, this plus Hugo Fisser. Okay, we'll add it to the show notes. And my Twitter handle, I won't pronounce it here, but we can also add that. Too. I know his Twitter handle, but I will also not pronounce it because I don't know what language it's in. But yeah. we, will, we will put it, you will, actually <laughs> by, now, by now you will see it uh, on the, on the um, lower banner because that's exactly, that's why, we'll, here. exactly yeah. that's why we'll put it. Yeah. I, will, I will ask him off, off screen what that means. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Bye. Bye.